Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. In a new level of trashiness for this channel, I am reporting to you live from a 7-Eleven. You might be wondering why. Well, actually, it's a 7-Eleven in Japan. I'm basically testing to see just how bad the audio is in a place like this. Because uh, in, in Japan, a 7-Eleven has really consistent good Wi-Fi, as well as seating, kind of like a um, coffee shop. And it's open all night. So when I have some classes and interviews coming up at 5 and 6 a.m., I'll have a place to go because the Wi-Fi in my new hostel is questionable at best. So that brings me here. And uh, we get to enjoy people talking in Japanese and kids screaming uh, while I do a video. But just think of it as part of the fun. So in this video, we're talking about a guy named Luis Elizondo, and he is a confirmed Pentagon. I wouldn't even call him insider. What he is is he's, he's a retired guy who um, headed a department that studied UFOs. And he came out with this information a little over a year ago. And there's a lot of debate about this guy on the Internet. Um, because it seems like he is presenting a sanctioned and approved version of the UFO narrative. So, um, it's kind of funny, all the kids come into the 7-Eleven right when I begin doing a video. Like, it's been actually been quiet the whole time, but as soon as they punch the record button, all the kids come in. But, whatever. I think that comes with it. Anyway. So, um, oh, that, oh, by the way, um, if you're new around here, um, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, I don't, I'm not usually doing this in 7-Elevens. I promise you, usually the videos are better. Please hit that subscribe button as this helps keep the channel going, keeps, keeps me motivated to do the work. And I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is surprisingly difficult to do when you're talking about these types of subjects. To continue. So there was a lot of debate about this Luis Elizondo guy, what his motivations are, what his intentions are, what um, if his government approved a uh, government sanctioned version of crazy paranormal stuff is an accurate one that that uh, can be used. So he came out with an article a little bit earlier this month called Enter the Quantum World, What the Mechanics of Subatomic Particles Mean for the Study of UAP, which is the new branded term for UFOs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, Our Universe and Beyond. So he begins by saying, Today, much of our government's business is conducted behind closed doors and mostly for good reason. There are numerous secret programs, secret agencies, secret committees of Congress, secret laws, and even a secret courtroom. Um, probably, probably, it's probably multiple. Nothing like secret trials. That, doesn't, that sounds a little, bit, a, a little bit weird to me. Anyway, secrecy allows our government to collect and share information and even make decisions that otherwise could fall into enemy hands or be exploited. Ultimately, the purpose of keeping things secret in the government is to protect sources and methods and ensure the flow and integrity of information is maintained so decision makers can make decisions with the very best data available. It's no surprise that governments will go to great lengths to protect the information they consider sensitive. In fact, the more sensitive information is perceived, the more it is protected. Nowhere is this more true than the shadowy world of intelligence and espionage. A famous example of secretive programs was run by, run by a colleague of mine, Dr. Harold Putoff, who, by the way, is a major like ESP researcher from the 70s, uh, remote viewing researcher. Uh, the Stargate program was a secret intelligence collection effort straight out of science fiction books established by the Central Intelligence Agency under a different name and later adopted by the Defense Intelligence Agency. The purpose of Stargate was to train intelligence collectors in advanced human cognitive capabilities and use them to collect information. So Luis Elizondo, I mean, he's had his hands in all these programs as well. He's basically saying, hey, psychic spies, these are real. He says these elite individuals utilize the not very well understood phenomena of precognition and remote viewing to conduct espionage against their adversaries. So he's basically coming out. This is a guy from the Pentagon, sanctioned, 
uh, retired, but definitely doing what you know is on their behest, saying, "Hey, you know, the, the Stargate program may have ended, but it was working. It was a real thing. Remote viewing is a real, you know, it it, it works, and government agencies um, have to keep them secret because." We don't want some of this technology falling into enemy hands. So it's not a conspiracy theory to say that just because they officially closed something that it maintained stayed in operation. I mean, the, the skeptics who cite that as a reason to just debunk Stargate say, oh, well, they closed the program down. Must not have been anything important. Like, they don't understand the way programs, the way governments work. I mean, it's not a conspiracy theory that this, this maintained an operation. Some of the most out there research happening in the government right now is in the world of quantum physics. Quantum mechanics is a physics theory that studies the behavior of matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic level. Areas including teleportation, quantum entanglement, and zero point energy are providing new insights into the very fabric of our reality in space time. Ideas popularized by sci fi shows like Star Trek are proving more real than you might think. Uh, so he talks a little bit about uh, quantum teleportation effects. Uh, he talks about another example of government involvement in the weird world of quantum mechanics is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory uh, with Caltech. Uh, it detects fluctuations in gravitational waves caused by stellar black holes. Um, so until recently, the idea that gravity waves even existed, let alone compress and stretch space-time like a sleepy, was only theoretical. So, and what this is leading to is the concept, and then now he sidelines into the UFO subject, basically saying the idea of so-called warp drives or being able to travel across the cosmos through like the wibbly wobbly elements of gravity is no longer science fiction, and it's possible that. Aliens, ETs, could be visiting us, and it is uh, no longer something that is denied or thought of as impossible by the scientific community. So I don't want to. I don't want to um, go through the entire article. I'll, I will leave the, the link down below. Basically, what what's going on here is um, he talks about how quantum physics helps us explain the behavior of UFOs. He already talked about how remote viewing is a real thing. Basically, he's saying UFOs are a real thing. And again, this guy, um, this guy came straight out of the Pentagon. And I'm surprised this article is only getting a little bit of traction, only a few hits. It only had like um, 300 likes or something like that. It's crazy. It's so small. So it's a very interesting article. And you know what this article is saying is so many of the subjects that we you know skeptics have thought of as paranormal is now being given an official sanction by the US government. Now can we say Luis Elizondo is an official spokesperson for the US government? Well technically no because he's retired. But he's not a whistleblower. He um, you know he was hired on to this to the Stars Academy, that kind of nebulous and strange um, organization made by Tom DeLong of Blink one eighty two. But all of it, as critics have speculated, it seems very sanctioned by the government. So, you know, he's not somebody coming in and breaking secrets. He's somebody coming in and revealing secrets that have been designed or meant to be revealed. This is in coordination with the CIA releasing tons of documents about remote viewing. So at this point in time, the biggest proponents of supernatural subjects, mind outside the body, and even ETs may very well be the US government. So how can we still stay in this paradigm forever? And Luis Elizondo makes a good point about that, I, I believe down here someplace. One moment. Where he says, it's time for a paradigm change. This is when he mentioned UFOs don't seem to be bound by the same limitations and interpretations we have of space-time. They're here one moment, gone the next. We can safely assume that whatever technology is being used, it's likely far superior to ours. 
it's time for a paradigm change. And he talks about uh, 1800s patent trademark office predicted in 20 years there would no longer be a need for patents because everything would have been invented pretty short-sighted, right? And then he talks about Project Blue Book, which um, he basically says was the reason they didn't conclude anything was real back then was because it was just outside of their boggle threshold. And so just like we see so many so often with skeptics today, it's outside of what they can comprehend, so their minds just shut down and they pretend it isn't there. And he's saying that, you know, that that won't happen anymore because now this stuff is explainable with our new non-materialist working models of the universe. Pretty wild stuff coming out of Luis Elizondo, medium.com. And um, I guess that's it for this video uh, here at the 7-Eleven in Osaka, Japan. Um, I, guess, I guess I'll see you next time on <coughs> Where Do We Find Cyrus Next? If you like this stuff, please hit the afterlifetopics.com. You can sign up to... Uh, the Facebook page. You can support the channel by joining some of the classes we do twice a week. You can uh, buy books like Understanding Life After Death and shoot me a message or get in touch with me. And I will see you guys on the next video.